ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الحمد لله والشكر لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we glorify his sublime name azza wa jal we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to send salutations and blessings and peace and tranquility upon the best of creation our master Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and companions and folk and followers until the end of time radiyallahu anhum ajma'in all praise be to Allah that we are in the first week we've completed the first week of Rabi'a al awwal and we are a few days away from the 12th which is the Mawlid the birth date of our blessed messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so in light of this special time it behooves each of us to recall and remind ourselves of the great blessing that we have in the messenger of Allah as being our teacher and our guide sallallahu alaihi wasallam in so far as ibn asakir rahimullah one of the ulama in his tariq dimashq he relates a narration that even sayyidna musa alayhi salam prophet moses had asked Allah Ta'ala to be in this Ummah at the sharaf of not only being a believer in Allah and not only being someone who is testifying to the truthfulness of the Prophet of their time that is sent to them but in fact to be a Ummah specifically of this Supreme Prophet, the best of all Prophets, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is something to really reflect and contemplate that the great Prophet Musa, Moses السلام, wanted to be in our shoes, so to speak. He wanted to be a member of this Ummah. Kuntum khayru ummatin ukhrijat nas. You are the best of communities brought out for people. And so, who are we to deserve this honor? Each of us should reflect just the blessing of being a Muslim, but specifically a Muslim in this Ummah. The Ummah of the best of creation sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is a time to remind ourselves to go back to because one of the things about the relationship between teacher and student is that the more beneficial the knowledge that the teacher imparts the more love and respect and honor the student will have in the heart for that teacher and so what greater teacher is there than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what better knowledge is there than the knowledge that he imparted to this ummah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so we should want this ta'alluq this connection of the heart to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam the grandson of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam al hasan al sibt radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said imam tirmidhi relates in the shama'il which is a book we should all have on our in our libraries the shama'il of imam tirmidhi which is translated into english in more than one publication that he said i asked my uncle hind ibn abi hala to describe the hilya for the hilya for the description of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa kana wasafan and he was very good at painting a portrait he knew how to describe really well because sayna hasan alayhi salam of course radiyallahu anhu was young when the when the best of creation passed away sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so he asks his uncle and what does he say and he says he says wa ana ashtahi an an yasifa li shay'an ataallaq bihi and i desired that he would describe something for me that I can connect my heart with and this is a sunnah of the grandson of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba in general to want this connection this ta'alluq in the heart with the best of creation sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
This is why we remind ourselves of the Blessed Sira. This is why we remind ourselves of the Blessed Shema'il. So the heart can be connected to the one that we are in love with, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the sake of Allah, through the, through the love of Allah. And so he says, the first thing that he says, Hind ibn Abi Hala, he says, Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fakhman mufakhman Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was venerated, was dignified. Fakhm yani alim, mufakham mu'azzam. He was venerable and honorable and dignified in and of himself and recognized as such. And this is the reflection of his two special names, Ahmad and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahmad, the one that is the, the, the most praising, the most praiseworthy, and Muhammad, the one that is receives the praise the most. He praises Allah the most, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he is most receiving of praise amongst the khalq, amongst the creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَكَانَ وَجْهُهُ يَتَلَأْ And then he continues, he says, and his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would glow and shine. تَلَأْلُ الْقَمَرِ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْبَدْرِ Like the shining of the moon on a, on a clear night of a full moon. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the light that radiated from his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the other riwayah, when Abu Huraira was describing the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ka'anna shams tajri fi wajhihi. It's as if the sun were flowing in his face. One analogy with the moon, the full moon, that sweet light, and then the other great celestial light of our, of our world, the sun, both used as descriptions of the Prophet, the, the light of his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jabir, in the other hadith, Jabir ibn Samura, he says that he was, it was, he says that I, I was with, I was with the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fi laylatin idhiyan, in a night that was, it was, there were no clouds. And it was, it was, there were no clouds and it was bright, idhiyan from duha, it was bright from the full moon, but without any haziness, clouds to obstruct the full moon. alayhi and, and he says, and the Prophet ﷺ was wearing hullatun hamra, a red cloak. A red cloak, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How beautiful, how, how magnificent. He says, فَجَعَلْتُ أَنْذُرُ إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَى الْقَمَرِ And so I started looking at him and looking at the moon looking at him looking at the moon and in my opinion wallahi he was more beautiful than the moon sallallahu alaihi and subhanallah just the the light emanating the light ibn abbas in the hadith of ibn abbas anhuma, he says that the prophet sallallahu kana aflaj he had a gap between his front two Sacred, blessed teeth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is something that the Arabs considered very beautiful. And he says, فَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْ خَرَجَ كَنُورِ رُوِيَ كَنُورِ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ ثَنَايَهُ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was seen as if light were coming out from between his blessed teeth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, 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 the nur, the light of his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a reflection of the light of his blessed heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The light of his blessed face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a reflection of the light of his blessed heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what a heart. Reflect on the heart of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What, what, what heart was this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The greatest, the, the only locus in the cosmos that receives wahi, that can receive Qur'an, qawlan thaqila, this weighty, weighty word, we will cast upon you a heavy, heavy word. Were it sent down on the mountains, they would have rent asunder. But the blessed heart, Jibreel brings it down to your heart. It can receive the Quran. This, this blessed heart, which in the seerah, four times his sacred chest was split open by angels to wash that blessed heart. We know of the famous incident. Under Hanima Sa'adiyah, who, who took care of the Prophet ﷺ in the desert in his first few years, that the well-known incident in the seerah, when he was four years old, ﷺ, this is the first, though, of four, according to the hadith. It was not the only time. In that time, the angels came. They opened the blessed chest, ﷺ, they washed the sacred heart, 
They had the tist min dhahab, the golden basin with zamzam, and they washed the blessed heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they took out the, this black dot that every human being has in their heart. Every human being is born with a black dot in their heart. This was removed from the Prophet's heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the rest of people, this is the point of access for shaitan, for waswasa. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur in nas. He, he makes the shaitan, uh, uh, you know, incites in the chest. He whispers in the breasts of human beings. But the Prophet Sallallahu his he had the seal of prophethood between his blessed shoulder blades a little bit to the left. That's the point of entrance. And the point of actual waswasa is that black dot in the heart. The seal sealed it. The seal in the back blocked entrance. And the black dot itself was removed. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because he is ma'asum, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is divinely protected from anything negative, from any thought of uh, any thought of disobedience, from any act of disobedience, from any bad insinuation. To the extent that in the other hadith, he says every person has a qareen from the devils, uh, from the from the jinn. Everyone has a qareen, a partner, a, a a companion that makes the waswasa. They said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, yes, but mine. Allah Ta'ala protected me from him fa aslama and in one the other riwayah fa aslamu that the qareen of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became muslim and so in the other narration fa aslamu so i was safe the prophet is ma'soom sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is manifested in this initial time at the age of 4 when the blessed heart was the blessed chest was opened the blessed heart was washed sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the second time is in the hadith abu naim relates in the dalail al nubuwa that Abu Huraira anhu asked the Prophet وسلم, what was the first awal ma ra'ayt min amrin nubuwa? What was the first thing that you can recall, that you recall, that you saw when you came to Tamyiz, when he, when he grew up, وسلم, older, of the matter of prophecy, of the affair of prophecy, of the affair of prophecy. And he described وسلم, that he was in the desert once at the age of 10. That's the second time. And two angels came and again, opened his blessed chest, washed his blessed heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in this, in, this, uh, in this instance, what was removed, because they were speaking to one another. They said, Ahua Hua, is he the one? Naam, Hua Hua, yes, he's the one. And فَأَخْرَجَ Then they took out what? Al-ghil wal-hasad. You know, Ill, Ill feelings, grudges that one can have for someone else. Ghil. And then hasad, envy. And Imam Subki, he says that whatever is removed in these narrations, these are not actualities. These are potentiality, potentialities. These are not actualities. These are the potentials of those things. Because no, there is no actuality of anything wrong, any, any vice in the heart of the best of creation. Again, he is ma'asum. Imam Subki says this is the qabiliyah. The first time the, the, the black dot is the qabiliyah, the potential of receiving any negative waswasa from, from the devils. The second time, the qabiliyah, the potential of having ghil and hasad, holding a grudge or having envy. Because at the age of 10, this is when adolescents start entering into the teenage years was where these things become manifest normally for people. This potentiality is removed. What's the third time? The third time of this, reflecting on how special his blessed heart is, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. the third time at the age of 40, right before Badr wahi and this is related also by Abu Naim and others in the Dalai al-Nubuwa, in which the heart, the chest was opened, the heart was washed. Why? The ulama say, لِتَّهَيُّ وَالتَّقَوِّي Because to, for pre 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 preparation and for extra strengthening. زِيَادَ التَّقَوِّي Why? To receive قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا Wahi is about to start. This is before he goes into the Hirat to receive the beginning of Wahi. Revelation, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Upon what? Upon the only thing in the cosmos that can receive this qawlan thaqila, this weighty, weighty word that would shatter the mountains. The amana that all the other creation refused. This is our teacher, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is our guide, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is our beloved, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. This is our. This is why Muslims are always optimistic. Because we know who we're behind, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so long as we can hold on to the foundations of faith and piety, Iman and Taqwa. Whatever the 
exigencies of the moment, whatever the vicissitudes of time that we are facing, however bitter and difficult the qadr might be at any particular time, the heart is filled with optimism. Every Muslim should have optimism because of who our teacher is and because ultimately who is the sender of our teacher, Allah Ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of every single moment. And he is the Habib of Allah Ta'ala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the fourth time was right before the Isra and Mi'raj. And this is also from authenticated hadith. And this time that the that the, the golden basin in the hadith it says mamlu' hikmatan wa iman and it was the it was filled with wisdom and great faith certitude and again all of this is ziyada the prophet ﷺ is always ascending from the beginning of his life in hikmah and iman and taqwa in faith and certitude and wisdom sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this is extra ziyadat. Why? Because what's about to happen? Al Isra wal Mi'raj. That momentous journey. That momentous journey. And what did the ulama say? The wisdom to fill with extra hikmah, extra iman, extra unimaginable certitude, the tahayyu, to prep, prepare the sacred heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lima shahada tilka layla, for what he was to witness on that special night, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah The heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam What is this heart? And this is where his the, This is where all of that light was Most intense such that the Sahaba were saying look at that say, blessed face Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's better, it's more beautiful than the moon. It's like the sun is flowing in it. It's like light is coming out between these beautiful teeth. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he speaks any words. Subhanallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfirullah. Inna allaha ghafurur. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salli lahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Nabi al-Nami Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi Wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun In the authentic hadith that Imam Ahmad relates in the Musnad That the Prophet, uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha relates She says, kana li ali rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wahshun the family of the Prophet Sallallahu they had a wild animal that was like a pet. They had this wild animal that was like a pet. And she describes, she says, فَإِذَا خَرَجَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would leave the house in the day, لَعِبَ وَذَهَبَ وَجَاءَ The animal would be very active and hyper. It would be playing, it would be bouncing around, it would be coming in, coming out all over the place. فَإِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, But when he would come home, صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, رَبَضْ It would sti sit still in its proper place. فَلَمْ يَتَرَمْرَمْ مَا دَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فِي الْبَيْتِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, And it wouldn't dare to move so long as the Messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, was home. And subhanAllah, another of the secrets of his blessed heart صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, is Sakina. The Prophet ﷺ is, he has the most sakina, tranquility of his person and his being ﷺ. To the extent anyone in his presence can sense it. It's so palpable. It's so clear. It's so potent. One can intuit and recognize and sense the sakina emanating from him ﷺ to the extent that even a wild animal doesn't dare to move from its place so long as he is home ﷺ. But what's its nature? When he leaves, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's all over the place. And some of these are subtle signs to, as windows as to who he is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sakina of his blessed heart, the nur of his blessed heart. What was the basis of this illumination? Is the remembrance of Allah Taala. And our mother Aisha also relates, as Imam Muslim narrates in the in the Sahih, 
Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha states, Kana kan al Nabiu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadhkurullaha ala kulli ahyanihi. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always making remembrance of Allah in all of his states sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's one of the secrets of this light. Because continuous remembrance of Allah. Imam Hakim al-Tirmidhi, one of the great metaphysicians of Islam, he says, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, ma min nurin fil qalb illa wa ma'ahu rahmatun min Allah ta'ala bi qadri dhalik. There's never a light in the heart, except that along with it, commensurate to it is mercy from Allah descending on that heart. فَمَا دَامَ الْعَبْدُ فِي الذِّكْرِ So so long as the servant is making remembrance of Allah, فَالرَّحْمَةُ نَازِلُتٌ عَلَيْهِ كَالْمَطَرِ Then mercy is showering down upon that person like rain. فَإِذَا غَفَ الْقَحَرِ But when the person stops making remembrance of Allah, there's a drought of the heart. Now again, what's the heart of the Prophet ﷺ? كَانَ النَّبِي ﷺ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ أَحْيَانِهِ And so according to our scholars, the light was always there, commensurate to the mercy descending upon him continuously. We did not send you except as a cosmic mercy, a, a mercy to all realms of being, to all realms of the cosmos. This is what the Prophet represented. And another great favor of Allah upon us as an ummah is that he, that our mother Aisha was his wife وسلم, from an early age. Why? Because she, how many prophets had wives as teachers of their ummah? We learn many things about the home life and what things were like in the home of this best of, of the best of creation وسلم, of this sacred prophet وسلم, because of Sayyidatuna Aisha, one of the greatest scholars of all of Islam, of all history of human beings. And so we're learning so much, not just about the public life, but the private life of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through her, radiallahu ta'ala anha. But this, the remembrance and the mercy, and this is what, this is what it's all about. This is why, and we'll conclude with this, inshallah, is that ultimately the time of the Mawlid is, is a reminder to us of the prophetic optimism, because the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was always optimistic. In the end, Allah Ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, ala al istawa Allah Ta'ala manifested his, himself with the name Ar-Rahman when he assumed the throne. His tajalli with respect to the throne, which encompasses the whole cosmos, is one of mercy. Because, Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. My mercy encompasses everything. It's not always apparent, but it's there. This is the promise of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, its manifestation may not be in the moment of a calamity, but it's there. If we have a good opinion of Allah, it's always there. Whoever thinks that Allah's subtle grace of mercy and comfort is separated from his harsh decrees, then that's because they're short-sighted. Why? Because the final affair is always for the pious ones. For the followers of Atqa Nas, of the most pious of people, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The mercy is there. It may not be manifest at that moment, but it's always there if we intuit it. The, the Prophet also taught us as a basis of optimism that Allah Ta'ala says, as Bukhari relates in the authentic hadith Qudsi, abdi bi. I am in the opinion of my servant of me. And I am with him so long as he makes remembrance of me. And that also means that the Prophet ﷺ had the ma'iyah of Allah always. But this is the basis. Bukhari also relates the hadith. When Allah Ta'ala created creation, He inscribed in His writ, in His book, which is an, an inscription that He made. As, as if mandatory for him, i.e. he promises to act in this way. And it is in this writ is in the presence, in his presence, on the throne. And Allah Ta'ala is not physical. So this is not interpreted in that way. And what's written in this writ? Inna rahmati taghlibu ghadabi. 
Verily, my mercy always dominates and outstrips and conquers my wrath. My mercy conquers my wrath. This is the basis of optimism. Whatever the trials that we're seeing as an ummah, as humanity, in fact, the rahmah of Allah conquers his, his wrath. And it's always present, ever present, omnipresent. And the Prophet ﷺ is one of the most powerful manifestations of this because Allah Ta'ala said about him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we have not sent you except as a mercy to all realms of being, Wasallam. And so, مَنْ حَسَّنَ ذَنَّهُ بِاللَّهِ Abu Sulaiman al-Dawrani says, whoever beautifies his opinion of Allah, and that's the sunnah that we should revive in this blessed time. What do we take away from the mawlid? Let us revive in our hearts a beautiful opinion of Allah because that's what the Prophet ﷺ always had because of all that light, because of all that remembrance, because of all that tawakkul. Man hassana dhannahu billah, whoever beautifies his opinion of Allah, faqad fataha Allah alayhi bab al rahmah. Allah Ta'ala has already opened the floodgates of mercy upon that person. Just that good opinion means that the mercy is coming. It's descending already because it's only by Allah's mercy that we can have a good opinion. We can't create that on our own. Allah Ta'ala khaliqu kulli shay. He's the creator of everything. And so whatever goodness, even with respect to our opinion of Allah that we have, Allah Ta'ala is the one that grants that tawfiq. Subhanallah. So the mercy is already in. It's coming already. And that good opinion then invites more. It's exponential. It's exponential. And we'll conclude with an, a story that Imam al Junaid, rahimahullah ta'ala, third century heir of the Prophet, was once sitting with his students. And he says that, Ida badat dharratun min ayn al karimi wal jood. Alhaqat al musi' bil muslih wa baqiya a'maluhum fadlan lahum. He says to his students, if a single atom, if a single dharra, an atom of, from the essence of divine mercy, divine generosity were to be manifested, then the sinner, the sinful believer would be matched, brought to the level of the pious believer. And the differences of their deeds would just simply be extra credit. And one of his students, Ibn Ata, says, Mata tabdu, when will it manifest? When will it manifest? And Imam Junaid rahimahullah says, He abadiya. It's already manifest. Qala Allah Ta'ala, because Allah Ta'ala has said, In rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. My mercy has outstripped my wrath. My mercy has outstripped my wrath. We ask Allah Ta'ala to revive His remembrance in our hearts. We ask Allah Ta'ala to fill our hearts with love of Allah and His Messenger We ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us the ta'alluq to the Prophet in our hearts like His blessed grandson asked for when he asked for the description of the Prophet We ask Allah Ta'ala to fill our hearts with a beautiful opinion of Allah particularly in the most difficult of our times of our lives. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make those times the times when we have the most optimism, the most tranquility, the most nur, the most the most tawakkul, reliance on Allah in those times. The most beautiful opinion of Allah in those times. We ask Allah Ta'ala to grant this to the entire ummah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bring relief to the ummah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bring relief to the people of California. We ask Allah Ta'ala to send rain in California, to put out these fires, to, to send comfort to the people that lost so much, whether lives or property or, or whatever vicissitudes, that they, difficulties that they face. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make relief for the entire global community of human beings, Bani Adam. We ask Allah Ta'ala to, to ward off the climate change that is posing a, ca a global catastrophe for the entire human family. We ask Allah Ta'ala to shower His mercy down in the most difficult of times. We ask Allah Ta'ala to relieve the oppression that is being forced upon so many Muslims across the world, whether in concentration camps in China, whether in ethnic cleansing in Burma, whether in the humanitarian crisis in Yemen and across the world, war-torn countries in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, in all places, innocent people, victims of a pr prison industrial complex in this land. We ask Allah Ta'ala to send down His mercy upon all of these people, upon all of us, the entire Ummah, and all people that are disenfranchised and oppressed in the entire world. 
اللهم انا نسالك العفو والعافيه المعافاه التامه في الدنيا والاخره ربنا اتنا من لدنك رحمه وهيئ لنا من امرنا رشدا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين واقيموا الصلاه